Uh, let's turn to the Gospel of Mark, <coughs> um, chapter 4, and a little passage here just at the very end of the chapter, a familiar passage, uh, reading from verse 35. <coughs> that day when evening came, he said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. There, uh, there, was other, there was also other boats with him. A furious squall came up, and the waves broke over the boat, so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind, and, and the said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. <coughs> Ending there at verse 41. <coughs> this is a story about a storm that came up here as they were crossing uh, that little lake uh, that, that evening. Um, and the Bible talks quite a bit about storms uh, here and there. And uh, I believe they, they represent struggles and difficulties uh, that we go through in life and face in life. And that can be for many, many different reasons. It can be our health, it can be our finances, our family, our relationships, or our work, or career, or business, or many, many things. Uh, uh, storms can come in and just uh, totally uh, knock us off course, as it were. And uh, storms are something we never plan for. They, they take us completely by surprise. We don't factor them into our journey. Uh, you know, I've never... Uh, get up any morning and said, uh, I think I'm going to have a storm today. <laughs> or uh, on a Monday morning, I'll go out and say, this week, I believe we'll have a storm this week. We don't do that. We, <laughs> they take us completely by surprise. We're, we're not expecting it. And, uh, you know, they can, they can be life life changing. And uh, that the, 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 it was this case with us here. And uh, storms just come all, all of a sudden. You know, back on the 4th of <coughs> November, uh, a few minutes after 1 o'clock in the afternoon, Rosemary and I were just having a conversation. And inside seconds, a storm came that changed our lives forever. And that's how storms, they just, they come, we, 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 we don't plan ahead for them. And <coughs> uh, the, the they set out here. Jesus had been teaching by the Sea of, of, of Galilee or the Sea of Tiberias or the Lake Genezaret. It's called by these different names. It's the same little uh, stretch of waters, about 13 miles long by about 7 miles wide, roughly the size of our own Loch Ness here. Um, and so they, when he had finished teaching, and, and, and just imagine, you know, Jesus was there teaching uh, through the day and Great atmosphere of, of faith, things were happening, blind eyes were being opened, deaf ears uh, um, uh, were, were, were hearing, and, and leprosy was being healed. Miracles were happening, and words of wisdom were being spoke by Jesus. And something just the, the atmosphere of faith that pervaded uh, that. And they came to the evening, and, and then Jesus said, and there in verse 35, let's go to the other side. And, uh, and so that was, you know, uh, the, 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 uh, and and, and they should, knowing Jesus and being with him for a period of time, they, they would have known that Jesus has a reason for going to the other side. It's, it's just not, this is not just for a little evening uh, jaunt in the boat just after a day's work. Uh, uh, they, they would know that he would have a reason there. And, and so um, conditions were ideal as, as they set out. Um, <clears throat> these were experiences 
remember a lot of these were experienced sailors and fishermen. They, they made their livelihood on that little stretch of water uh, out on their boats. Uh, that was where they were whenever Jesus called Peter and John and, and that. And so um, <clears throat> they, they were experienced uh, and, and at reading this, the signals and the wind direction and all the weather signs that there, there were. Uh, and they would they would know ahead of time when it, when a storm was approaching. So there was nothing to suggest that they were in any danger. And, and as they uh, looked the signs, that, uh, where I grew up, there was a uh, an elderly man that lived in the next farm. Uh, and you know he was better than the Met Office. <laughs> he could tell you the signs of the weather, the way the birds were flying, or the certain direction of the wind, or how the leaves were on the trees. And he had all these signs and. Nine times out of ten, he was 100% right, <laughs> sometimes better, as I say, than the Met Office. Uh, and so these, these were, so there was nothing to suggest here that they were in, in any danger. And, the, and they were in the will of God. They weren't going off just on their own. They didn't say at the end of the day, oh, well, we've had a hard day, we'll go and uh, relax about the go out in the boat and relax. No, they went at the command of Jesus. Jesus says, let's go to the other side. And, and sometimes, you know, whenever storms, uh, strike us, <clears throat> the devil will be in there uh, with an accusation, oh, you shouldn't have done this, you, you should have taken it, you should have done this, you should have done that, uh, you're out of the will of God, and, uh, and you know, it can just come and throw those accusations at, at us. But here, you know, th they were completely in the will of God, so storms come just when we're in life, uh, and uh, uh, so, uh, and, and when the devil comes with those accusations, we have to stand against them. Uh, and if we have made, we're all human and we can make mistakes. And if we've made a mistake, God's a God of love and mercy. So let's, you know, if there's something you think, oh, I should have done that different, then repent before God. And that closes the door and, and silences the accusations of the enemy. <clears throat> so for a few uh, minutes today, I want to look at some of the aspects of, of this story that might help us in the storms that we we play we face. <clears throat> and you know, the storm is always about where you're going. It's never where you're coming from. This this was you know there was a purpose on the other side of this storm. And if we go into the following chapter in in, in, in chapter five. Uh, it says, when Jesus got out of the boat, a man with an evil spirit came from the tombs to meet him. <clears throat> and then if you go on down that <clears throat> chapter to verse 21, it says, when Jesus had again crossed over by the boat to the other side of the lake, a large crowd gathered around him. So here, Jesus goes over specifically to meet this one man. This guy who was uh, tormented, the, 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 demoni the demoniac from, from Gadara, <clears throat> and Jesus had, had to, he went over there specifically to reach that one man and came straight back. And so, you know, when a storm comes up in your life, it's always about where you're going. There's always a purpose on the other side. And, and this demon-possessed man was an important weapon in, in Satan's arsenal. And, and through the, the actions of this man, the devil had held uh, the, 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 uh, the, the countryside to ransom for a very long time. <clears throat> and so he knew that if Jesus crossed the sea that night, that he would set that man free and, and he would lose his grip on that whole area. So remember that, you know, whenever a storm comes in your life, uh, it's not, you don't think, what have I done? What have I not done? Think, what is it that God has ahead for me here? Why is it? Why, why is this coming? What's up ahead? <coughs> and and uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's not about where you came from. It's about wh where you are going. For here was Jesus <coughs> on the brink of one of the greatest miracles in his ministry, and the devil whips up a storm. And so he will do his utmost to, to cause you to abandon the purpose of God in your life. <coughs> and so, you know, when a storm comes, we need to stand on the Word of God, stand on, on and, and um, Trevor was talking, you know, so much this morning about the Word of God. That's our guide. That's our, uh, wh what we stand on. And when a storm comes in, that's when we need to anchor fast to that and hold on. We may, may not understand what's happening, <clears throat> may not know the reasons behind it, 
But God's word is faithful. And God says, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. And some storms, God calms, as he did in this one here. But you know, there are other storms that he takes you through. We'll look a little bit at that later on. But, <clears throat> but uh, you know, the devil knows that if you, uh, if you fulfill your destiny, then other lives will be touched and other lives will be set free. <clears throat> <clears throat> Number two, <clears throat> We see the panic that the storm caused. Fear gripped the disciples whenever this storm arose. They thought they were, they were going to drown. And you know, fear is one of the, of the devil's main weapons. All they could see was disaster. But you know, they, they forgot something very, they forgot two very important things, in fact. <clears throat> they forgot, first of all, that Jesus said, they were going to the other side. They didn't listen to what Jesus said. Jesus said, let's go to the other side. So he didn't say, we'll go to the other side if the weather allows us. He didn't say, we'll go to the other side if a, uh, if a storm doesn't come or anything like that. Uh, he didn't say whether, as far as he was concerned, it was a done deal. And so, you know, we need, to, we need to listen and hear what God is saying. They, they, they didn't listen. They just they, they partly heard. You know, so sometimes we're like that. We just partly hear. We, we, we hear the, the headlines and we don't take time to uh, look at the small print uh, and hear, God, what are, what are you saying here? And, uh, you know, if they had listened properly to Jesus, Jesus said, we're going to the other side. Uh, and, you know, they would have said, when that storm come up, well, it's okay, it's, it's a bit rough. But Jesus said we're going to the other side, so therefore we can we can know it. He'll take us to the other side, however rough it might be, however the boat might be lurching. He will get us there. But no, they 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 panicked uh, and 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 they were screaming in fear. And oh, we we read it there. <coughs> uh, um, it says uh, uh, they said to him, "Teacher, don't you care if we drown?" They thought they they, they saw the worst. And so often when a storm comes, you know, we take our eyes off the promises of God. We take our eyes off God's Word and we focus on the situation and all they could see that evening was the huge waves that were rising up and perhaps were coming over and the, the, the boat filling with water and, and, and they're looking at the not your thing that seemed as if they were going to drown. It seemed as if their little boat was going to uh, capsize and, and, and drown and, and they would drown in those waters. And, and instead of saying, well, you know, it's okay, God, Jesus has said we're going over, so therefore we'll get over, however rough it might be. And, and, and so we need, to, we, need to, we need to focus that on, on, on the promises of God. And, and also, they forgot something else, that Jesus was on the boat with them. <laughs> you know, and, and when we're in the midst of difficulties, we can so easily forget that God is with us. God said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. And that, that holds true regardless of what the circumstances are, how difficult it gets, God never, ever leaves us. And I can testify to that through, you know, these last number of months. <coughs> uh, it's been a storm. It's been difficult, but God has been there. And God's grace has been uh, every turn of the road. Whenever you, uh, and the thing I also have learned that God's grace is only there when you need it, <laughs> on that moment when you need it. Uh, I would always like to, to have it a couple of days ahead of time, uh, but it doesn't. It only comes whenever that moment arrives. You know, as, as we <clears throat> uh, uh, gathered around Rosemary's bed and knew that she was going home to be with the Lord, you know, we were there was the dread of how, when that moment comes, you know. But God's grace, God's grace was there. In that moment, then we dread, you know, the day of the funeral. How will we cope? And yet, God's grace was there, and God's grace is, is there at the time we need it. It doesn't come ahead. And if we start to, you know, we don't get grace for tomorrow's troubles until tomorrow comes. And so, uh, we have to remember that Jesus was is there with us. He was in that boat. He was. Uh, 
he was, he was far, fast asleep. And, and, uh, uh, and so we, we need to remember that his presence is with us. He says, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. He doesn't say you'll never go through difficult times. He doesn't say you won't have trials. You won't have difficulties. In fact, the, 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 the Word of God tells us in the book of James, I think, think, don't think it's strange that these trials come. Don't, don't, don't be surprised. That's part and parcel of life. And so it is and still is today. And no matter how godly we live or anything else, difficulties come. And, and we face difficulties in life. So, uh, you know, that's just part and parcel of life. But God says, I'll be with you through it. And that's what counts. It's his, knowing his presence, knowing that he's there, knowing that his grace is sufficient uh, for every need, for every trial. And, and, and so, you know, God uh, d doesn't uh, change his mind, you know, about, about your destiny just because uh, the devil throws a spanner in the works. God's tell us a plan. God's tell us a purpose for your life. Uh, difficulties come. We need to remember the promises of God. We need to remember what God has said. Trust in God's word. You know, this, this book has, no matter what we face in life, this book has got something to say about it. It's the most up-to-date book in the whole world. <laughs> Hundreds and thousands and millions of books have been written. Uh, and, you know, books come and go. They come into print, and maybe years later you're looking for what's gone out of print. Here's a book here that has stood the test of time. Still as fresh today. It's more up to date than tomorrow morning's newspaper. And there's all in it that we need. Whatever we're facing in life, God has something to say about it. And so we need to anchor to that. When the winds of adversity are trying to blow us off course, uh, we need to anchor to the promises of God. And that's the thing that will hold us in times of difficulty. The devil's plan is to get us focused on the storm rather than where we're going. We need to keep our eyes fixed on him and the purpose of him, the destiny that he has for our lives. Get focused on that and he will bring us through. He will bring us through to the other side. It may not be in the way that we would like best. It may not be in the way that we might have anticipated he will get us there, and we need to trust him. It's about trusting him whenever we can't trace and know what's happening, you know, uh, and, and, and we, we, like these disciples, we panic. We throw up our hands in despair. God, where are you? We can't feel your presence. We, where, where are you? We, we don't know you're in the boat. You know, God's in your little boat, no matter how rough the sea gets outside it. Uh, and so we need, we need to, uh, and also we need to remember his word, remember his promises, remember the prophetic words that we've been given. So often we get a prophetic word, and always thought, oh, that was a great prophetic word. And then a week later, whenever we had a bump, we don't remember the prophetic word. That's what we need to, you know, <laughs> if possible, record it or write it down or something, and then draw on it whenever this, the time comes in. Look, oh, God, this is what you said. This is what that, you know, sometimes you get a prophetic word, and you, you think to yourself, I'm not sure just what that's about. And, and, and sometimes you just scrap that and think, and you, there'll come a time down the road when you think, oh, that's, that's what God was saying back there two weeks ago or six months ago or whatever it was. So, so you know, we need to remember. Uh, and, and uh, you know, this storm here was a, an opportunity for them to see God's power in action. Every trial and every difficulty, uh, you know, depending on how we take it, it can be a stepping stone to greater things in God. Faith, faith's like a muscle. You know, if you don't keep using a muscle, uh, well, that refine and lose its, its its function. It's only as we as we use the, the, that 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 muscle to keep, you know, doing those press ups and all that stuff that you know Trevor does every day there. <laughs> <laughs> right, uh, uh, and and that that's, that that builds builds our our faith muscles like that as as we use it, you know, then that strengthens us for the next step of the journey and the next challenge that's down the road because, they'll, you know, when you get through one challenge, oh, you just breathe a sigh of relief. That's it. But it's, that's only it until the next one comes along. And life is full of challenges. But, you know, we have a God who is able to meet <coughs> every 
and be with us in every challenge. Number four, <clears throat> we see his presence in the storm. You see, the disciples, they would have been in storms many times before. They, they, they made their livelihood in this stretch of, of water. They were out there day and daily. And, and this little lake here, this little stretch of water, because of the geographical location of a lake, it was subject to storms. Uh, it's situated below sea level. Uh, and it's surrounded by high hills on, 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 on every side, which affect the, the, the wind currents. Uh, and so, you know, they, they would have been in many storms before, and, and I'm sure there was a history of, of lives being lost in this little stretch of water, you see. And all of these facts served to heighten their fears that evening. And, uh, but you know, the, the, the difference this time was that <laughs> Jesus was on the boat, as I've already said. He was, he was not up screaming in terror and, and shouting and wringing his hands, oh, how are we going to manage this time? He was asleep in the back of the boat. He was, he was asleep, and he was asleep on a cushion, and, and this was where the helm, helmsman sat. He was, he was there right asleep beside where the, the guy was steering the boat. So that boat wasn't going anywhere without his permission. And so, you know, we, we need to remember that, as I've already said, in those times, uh, those difficulties, when we can't trace Jesus, we can't even feel his presence, and, and, and all we see is doom and gloom, and, 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 and we, 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 you know, we can't feel him in the whole situation. We've got to remember, he is there. He is there, even when we can't feel him. And um, um, Dr. John Ard. Uh, Andrews was doing the, the morning Bible studies in this this week um, on on the temptations of Jesus, and it was just so tremendous. And the, the thing that he finished up with on Friday morning was that just this very thing that you know Jesus is God is there even when we don't feel Him. Sometimes we're so dependent on feelings, you know, but we need to be dependent on His Word. We don't always feel God, but God says, I'll never. So we can, we can stand and, and, and trust his word. Hebrews 13, 5, it says, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Number three, <coughs> the possibilities that the storm presents. <coughs> you see, any storm will present you with possibilities both negative and positive. Uh, in, in the King James Version, it calls us a great storm. It says a great storm blew up. That word great is, means mega or, or massive. Uh, uh, <coughs> and uh, Luke's account of, of the story says that uh, they were in great danger. So this was, this was the reality of, of the situation. And uh, I think, you know, that's, we, we, we need to also, while we, we're in faith and know God's in control, we, we need to not ignore the difficulties or the realities of the situation that we're in. You know, we, 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 get, we get a, there's a, a hyper-faith doctrine, um, and, and I think one of the failures in it is that, you know, we ignore the, the, the ignores the realities of, of the situation, uh, and so oh, we, you know, they, they speak kind of mind over matter. Oh, I, you know, I don't, I don't have a cold. I don't have the flu, and they're streaming <laughs> all over the place. And, and you know, we need to recognise that yes, this this was a storm. This was, there was danger elements to this. They had been there before. They had, they knew the possibilities that um, boats had probably sunk in that little stretch of water. And, and, and so we, we need to remember, yes, this, this is an attack of the enemy. This, this could take us out. Uh, that, that's, the, that's the reality. But for God. And God is the one who will either deliver us or, or bring us through it. 
Uh, and so, <coughs> you know, the hyper-faith people are so afraid of speaking negativity that they, they ignore the reality of, of the situation. And so we need to be aware of that. But we also need to be aware of the authority that God has given us. And, uh, you know, don't, don't, <coughs> don't be blind to realities, but that doesn't mean that we're not in faith. And we know who God is. We know Jesus said, I've given you power over all the power of the enemy. Whenever this term comes up, we need to rise up and stand up just like Jesus did that day <coughs> and, uh, you know, know that we have the authority that he has, God given authority that he has given us. And, you know, we used to sing um, a little song that says, if I never had a problem, I'd never know that he could solve it. I'd never know what faith in God can do. Every problem is an opportunity to experience the grace and the power and, and the goodness of God. So let's, you know, not be daunted by, yes, there's negative possibilities, but there are always, there's always also tremendous positive possibilities. And, you know, the storm is, why is that storm? Because God has greater things than the other side. God still has a plan for my life, regardless of what the circumstances might be. And... You know, as I said, we're in, sometimes when we're in the, the battle, we, we, we can not always see him or feel him, but he's still there. The little children's chorus says, with Christ in the vessel, we can smile at the storm as he goes sailing by. And so we need to make sure that he's in <coughs> our boat. And we see number five, the power over the storm. <coughs> Psalm 73, verse 26 says, My flesh... And my heart feel, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. And, and <clears throat> whenever things here get to desperation point and they're at their wit's end, they suddenly remember, oh yeah, Jesus is here. Where is he? And of course, as I said earlier, he's, 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 he's asleep. And then they, they go and accuse him of not. Yes. Master, do you, do you not... Teacher, do you, do you not care if we drown? They'd been with him. They'd seen all the wonderful things that he'd done, the wonderful miracles, and here they're saying, oh, you don't care about us. You know, we need to remember the goodness of God. And, and, and so, uh, <coughs> he, you know, he might, he might have been asleep, but he was still in control of the situations. And sometimes in our situation, you know, we, 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 we're, we're a bit like that, we think. Has God gone to sleep? Where is God? You know, he's not answered. We've prayed, and our prayers are not being answered, and there's no change in the situation, and things are maybe getting worse. And you know, where has has, has God gone to sleep? You know, God God knows your situation. He knows who we are. He knows how we are. And he knows where we are, and He's in control, even though we we can't always feel Him. And the situation seems sometimes outside control. You know, he, he wants us to know that he is still in control. And, you know, he got up from, woke up, they get on Egypt, so very calmly, and just speaks to that storm. He, worked, he didn't get up and threw up his hands. And, oh, he should have woken me earlier. Didn't know it was as bad as this. <laughs> you know? And, you know, he just gets up very calmly, so he speaks. Be cell. He didn't have to shout at it. He didn't have to go through any ritual or ceremony or burn incense or incense or fast for forty days. And there's there's a time and a place for that. I'm not knocking fasting, but he didn't have. He just rose right there. And you know we need to remember that in difficult times when we face stuff, that God's power is resident within us. We can just draw on it, draw on that anointing. Make a demand on the anointing of God. That's what the Holy Spirit is in our lives. He, he's ever, uh, you know, I love that scripture in Luke 4 and 18 where Jesus makes a declaration at the beginning of his ministry. He says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed. This was the declaration that he made right at the commencement of his ministry. And, and Jesus didn't do miracles because of his deity. He, 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 he did miracles by the power of the Holy Spirit. 
And that same Holy Spirit is available to you and I. And that same power is available to us. Let us you know, draw on it in those times of need and stand in the authority that God has given us. And finally, preservation through the storm. <coughs> we, went, <coughs> we went across to the, the, to the other side, as we read, or seen there in, in chapter 5, to the region of, of Gadara. Uh, in spite of all that happened, they, they got to their des- reached their destination. God wants all of us to reach our destiny. God has a plan for each one of us. Storms might come to hinder us. Let's remember God is in control. And sometimes, as I say, God calms the, the storm. Other times he takes us through. You know, we read another occasion in Acts 27, whenever they went through a storm, fierce storm, they lost the boat. And, you know, sometimes in the storm we can we can lose stuff, but, you know, they didn't really need the boat at the end of the day. I mean, sometimes all we lose is stuff that we don't need. But they went through that storm, and great things happened when they when they were cast on an island, and they were there for three months, and tremendous miracles happened. That was a storm that they went through. Read a story back in the Old Testament, Daniel, the three Hebrew children, went through the fire. Uh, they weren't rescued from the fire. Uh, they went through that fire, but, you know, there was another person in the fire with them. Looking on, they could see the form of the fourth man. And remember that, you know, and it says, verse 27, they came out without even the smell of burning on them. So God's not about to, to abandon us, no matter what stage that we, we are at. And whatever storms you might be facing or whenever they come, and, you know, as I say, storms are just part of life. So, uh, but let's remember, it's not about the storm, it's what's on the other side. God has a plan and a purpose and a destiny. I want to close just by uh, a um, lovely little song that, that we, we sing. You maybe know it and you maybe don't. It says, keep me safe till the storm passes by. <clears throat> In the dark of the midnight have I oft hid my face. <clears throat> While the storm howls above me and there's no hiding place. Mid the crash of the thunder Precious Lord, hear my cry. Keep me safe till the storm passes by. <clears throat> the chorus goes, till the storm passes over, till the thunder sounds no more, till the clouds roll forever from the sky. Hold me fast. Let me stand in the hollow of your hand. Keep me safe till the storm passes by. Many times Satan whispered, there's no need to try. There's no end of sorrow and there's no hope by and by. But I know you're with me, and tomorrow I'll rise, for the storms will no longer darken the skies and the course again till the storm passes over. The thunder sounds no more till the clouds roll forever from the sky. Hold me fast. Let me stand in the hollow of your hand. Keep me safe till the storm passes by. Storms come. Storms go. He remains the same, and he will hide us. He will keep us safe in the midst of those storms. He will either calm us or he will take us through to the other side. Let's pray. <clears throat> Father, this morning, <coughs> we thank you for your word. Thank you, God, that you're still the same, Lord. You haven't changed, Lord, from whenever you rode that little boat. Oh, God, you're still the same, and Lord, you're in every storm with us, O oh God. You never leave us. You never forsake us. Lord, I just thank you for these people this morning, Lord, and you know their individual situations. And, O oh God, if there's storms, O oh God, we just come and we stand in agreement, O oh God. And, Lord, we, we speak to that storm uh, in Jesus' name. Uh, and, Lord, you will either calm that storm or you'll take them through, Lord, to the other side in safety. Take away the fear, O oh God. We rebuke fear. Lord, the enemy is the author of fear. We rebuke every fear and every panic, Lord, that would seek to pervade our lives, Lord. And we speak peace, O oh God. Speak peak peace, Lord, in the midst of the storm. In Jesus' name. Bless them, Lord. Thank you for them, Lord. I just pray you'll minister to each and every individual life bowed in your presence here today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.